So we want to talk about um, kind of what is the big talk around here. Uh, when we first started doing these sipping chats, we talked about how um, the feds were going to reduce interest rates at least three times this year, uh, with the first one being in May. Yeah. And then word came back, nope, they're not going to be able to do it due to the um, economy and what's going on there. And now I'm hearing that the government is trying to put pressure on the feds to ha hold them to their promise. Um, to reduce the interest rates now. Well, there's they, no crystal ball to when mortgage rates are going to go down. No, no crystal ball. So I believe if you're, you know, nothing should be holding you back if you're and on big decisions if you're ready to go. So if, if rates are higher than you'd like, you should that, that shouldn't necessarily stop you as long as you're prepared. And right. what we're going to talk about is being a little bit prepared. Right. So again, if the feds are going to reduce the interest rates, what does that mean for you, the buyer, right? Well, right now, what we see is there's lack of inventory. That's number one, lack of inventory. So it's really hard for you right now to, some of you, to find homes because what we're seeing is multiple offers. We're seeing home prices going up. And right now, if you're looking to buy, now is the time. Um, I wouldn't wait for interest rates to drop. Matter of fact, if you get in now and interest rates drop, you can refinance. But wait, there's more. We, <laughs> but wait, there's more. We want you to be prepared. And how do you get prepared? Or the six things you can do to kind of help you in this multiple offer situation, doing this uber frenzy um, state that we're in with these homes. So number one, if you can go all cash, go all cash. Cash is king. Cash is king. So let's go cash. Um, you need to have the funds. You need to show proof of funds in order to make that happen. Number two, you want to offer high earnest money. Earnest money is like good faith money to the sellers. So you want to offer, I would say probably around 4% um, of earnest money uh, to show that you are willing and able and, and capable of getting buying that home, right? You want to show them that you're serious. Another thing you can do, number three, is pre-inspection. This is getting an inspection prior to you submitting your offer. By doing the pre-inspection, you're able to see if there's anything major going on with that home. You're not there to nitpick. You just want to make sure there's nothing major that you would be responsible for with the home if you decide to waive the inspection. And it's not really waived because you, you did the inspection, right? And so I'm going to do that a couple of days before offer review day. And you could do it the day of, you could do it the day before. Sometimes you don't have a lot of time. It's, you want to do it as soon as possible. And uh, inspectors are accustomed to quick turnarounds. So that shouldn't be a problem. And then number four is offer more than list price. This is not the time to try to um, underprice the home. In this market, in the area, take just listen to your agent. Um, so many times I hear um, buyers go in and they say, "Oh, the home is six hundred. Let's do five ninety-five." Oh, in this market, we're going above. And typically, if you see a lot of business cards on the counter when you're shopping for a home on their kitchen counters or something, shopping homes, that means there's a lot of interest, and you don't have the majority of the time, you do not have a second chance to offer more. So always offer your best the first time around. So and talk to your agent if you think that the that you're, you have questions about the price. If you think the price is is is, is janky or something like that. Uh, well, yeah, definitely your your agent can tell you what the sell what what homes are selling for in that area. Right. right. But again, you definitely want to when starting this process, you want to start thinking positive and thinking that you want to offer your best. This is not the time to be trying to look for deals unless those homes have been on the market for 200 some plus days. Then you might want to try to get a deal out of it. And then you have to ask the question. What's, what's wrong, wrong with, with the it? house? What's wrong with it and why is, why it, is it still, still on, on the market? Right? So uh, let's see, one, two, three, four. Number five is uh, offer a non-refundable earnest money. This is where you're actually giving the money to the seller um, to show again how strong you are 
and as a as a buyer. In doing so, the deposit is no longer earnest money and is not refundable to the buyer. So definitely talk to your agent about that, but that is very popular when we have multiple offer situations. And then the last one, number six, is lease back to the seller. Some buyer offer to lease back, or the other word you use is rent back, the property to the seller after closing. This allows the seller time to purchase another property without finding themselves homeless, okay? Now, each item that we talked about, there is risk to each and every one of these. So definitely talk to a professional such as ourselves to help you walk through um, this process, right? Correct. Okay. So if you find this information helpful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more real estate insights and updates. Your dream home is out there and we're here to help you find it. Thank you for watching. Bye. Bye.